I do like to uh, throw out Hail hey. Marys every once in a while. Hey, you ain't dead. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> if you have a pulse, you know, let it throb. Yeah, <laughs> let, that, let that pulse throb. You believe in ghosts? Well, I don't not believe in them. Hell yeah, that was deep. Let me see your chest. I want to make sure you don't have any gills underneath your areolas. That's the only way to prove you're not an alien. Hey, we are coming to you live on Jeremiah Wonders right now with Leonard Robinson. Coming in hot on the show. How you doing, friend? <laughs> I'm doing all right. I'm coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coming in hot. Coming in hot. Exactly. Cut the, the fan. Oh, that's right, because it is like, I don't know, it's one of the hottest days we've had uh, yeah. in a while. Yeah, when because uh, we had this scheduled for a little bit. I was like, it's going to be a little, it could be a little toasty. It's one of those, oh, climate change is real kind of day, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. like, it's not supposed to be this hot Yeah. today. Yeah, yeah. But we're out here. We're out here. We're doing <laughs> We're doing a big in the, in the studio garage. Nobody would know that until you tell them, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is actually a pretty nice setup. I've seen, I've been to a lot of garages, and this, this is uh, this is one of the better ones. Ooh, thank you. Put it together myself, my friend. <laughs> uh, so one of the reasons I wanted to have Leonard on for you guys who may or may not know him, uh, the way I know him is uh, he is a paid regular at the Comedy Store, but he is also a resident member of the Groundlings, uh, which... If you're not familiar with the Groundlings, if you're let's say you're familiar with the Comedy Store, but you're not familiar with the Groundlings, or you're familiar with the Groundlings and not the Comedy Store, vice versa, uh, I don't think that there's many people in the history of comedy, to my knowledge, and if there is, it, it has to be a very, very short list that is a, it's Sunday Company? Or main company. Oh, main company. Main company. Mm -hmm. A main company resident member, as well as a paid regular. Uh, basically... In my opinion, and I think a lot of people's opinion, and I think it's it's just fact within comedy, those are the two hardest camps of comedy to solidify yourself in, and it takes years and years of dedication and work to climb to the status uh, at either place. So the fact that you are a member of both is pretty amazing. Well, I mean, I'm not in the garage for nothing. So. <laughs> uh, no, thank you. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know the the Groundlings Theater in school, um, you know, started in 74, and it's on Melrose Avenue. It's been the same spot, you know, for a long time, 7307 Melrose Avenue, and we do sketch and improv all week. It's mm -hmm. it's one of those feeder theaters that, you know, you might see people from um, SNL come from the most recently uh, Chloe Feynman. I was in Sunday Company with Chloe Feynman. Um, before her, the other Groundlings were that are in on SNL right now: um, Mikey Day, Heidi Gardner, head writer Ken Sublet is a is a Groundling alum. And and yeah, it took a long time to to get up there. And then um, and then same with the same with the Comedy Store. Many 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 nights, many years, late night, just waiting, just waiting to get up, hoping. Hoping somebody will be watching while you try and do your set, right? And then, and that's always the fear. Like you know, the one day you had the bad set is when somebody's watching. When the eyes are on you, yeah. You're just like, oh man, you don't understand. Like I was killing all week, and then you can know, you come see me a different night? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for whatever reason. And then now you're out the rotation or whatever. Um, you know, the ground is a little bit is a little bit different in that. Like you know, you take these classes and then you know they become pass or fail at, at a certain level. Um, or repeat, you know, and then you take another class and hope to, you know, pass. But then at a certain level, you know, it's just performance, and then that might be the last level. That might be the last class because they'll, they'll vote and say whether or not they, you know, want you to continue. And then uh, and then you do Sunday Company. That's like 18 months every Sunday doing a sketch show. Wow. Almost every week a new sketch show. So there's a lot of characters you got to create and a lot of sketches you got to create. And burn through, and then, uh, and then in the end, you know, you hope that you've you've done enough work that the main company will vote on you and and want you to join the company, and uh, you know that's what happened for me. I, I looked it up. I thought Kathy Griffin might have also been um, the only other person, but right. but she's but I looked it up. I don't think she was a comedy store regular. I don't think so either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I would probably would have been the only other person. Yeah, I can't really think of uh, anybody who off the top of my head. The, well, most people simple. don't do sketch and stand up. Most, you know. No, well, 
unless you unless you get drafted by you know from Lauren Michaels to do SNL, right. most people the, don't. The time commitment alone. That's what's so hard about it is like, I took the lower track mm-hmm. at Groundlings, and then my stand up tour picked up, mm. and all the classes for writing lab and different stuff like mm-hmm. that were Thursday Saturday. Oh yeah, and I had one time where it was a Monday Wednesday. I was like, great, I can mm-hmm. do this. Then they canceled on me, and then and then it went back to oh. the Thursday Saturday because they did couldn't find a teacher maybe or something. Yeah. So um, I was like. Yeah, this is this is my personal sign where I'm like, okay, well, I guess uh, it's yeah. tough. It I is mean, tough. Yeah. You seem to be doing all right, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's kind of how it goes, man. And, and you know, people wait wait for classes for years sometimes because yeah. schedules don't work out, or um, you know, you you in between the wait, you get work, you know, and stuff 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 starts happening for you. you put that put that energy into that, and then you're like, all right, I want to take class again. Before you know it, you look up, you're like, oh, it's been four years since I took a class here. Yeah. And that's not uncommon. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, it's also like it's so different, like with the within the stand up mentality of like if you are, you know, let's say you had a run of shows at the groundlings where for whatever reason you're off, where the main company is having to vote, like mm-hmm. around that time. As a stand up, like you can keep slogging it out over and over the years mm-hmm. where it's like eventually you could maybe become a paid regular if you yep. get your skill set level up or the cards fall in line where a certain talent coordinator likes you more than others or mm-hmm. whatever because comedy's so subjective as it is but uh that's that's a hard reality and i've had a lot of friends who uh you know have, have made it um uh, a well, smaller batch of friends who've actually made it onto like sunday or main company but a lot of friends who get cut and mm-hmm. they're just like so destroyed by it because yeah. you can't go back yeah i mean that's one of the the one thing that almost every ground link would tell you they hate is that part of the process where you have to say yay or nay to somebody you know moving forward or not but you know for anybody watching who's in a program or not even just you know interested in the ground or just in stand-up or, or just whatever you know comedy or acting or whatever you're into it's no different than the real world in, you know in a sense where it's like if you let one sp- if you let one institution, one no, tell you you can't do it and then you stop, then you never really wanted to do whatever you want to do anyways. You yeah. know, they, there's a bunch of people who got into Sunday Company and got cut and didn't get into Maine who are crazy successful. Um, you know, like For- Fortune Feimster was in Sunday Company uh, at one point. Yeah. And, you know, it. You know, hadn't looked back since. Right. You know, um, Sarah Baker, who, you know, another great actor. Um, uh, Liz, um, what's her last name? Liz Feldman, I think, who created the, the show Dead to Me on, on Netflix, you know, as a Sunday alum. So many people, um, those are just the three I can name off the top of my head, but so many people. Oh, I think Oscar Nunez from, uh, from The Office, I think, was in Sunday Company uh, at one point. But so many people have gone through that program and, and been successful and just, you know. It's just like with everything else. Like if you bombed one time on stage at some club and you just like, all right, well, stand up's not for me. Then it's like, well, yeah, then you're right. Stand up yeah, is not, not for you. Yeah. you As know? a matter of fact, yeah, you're onto something there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah to listen to yourself. Yeah. But you know, there. Are, but then there are those people who take that bomb and go, where else can I get up tonight? You know. Oh, and, and you go look for a spot. I'm a cleanse the palate guy. You know? I, I hate. I hate going to sleep on on a bad set no you gotta fix that yep I mean, even if it's just sitting in the parking lot let me make somebody laugh right let me got, rip this out i yeah. need something i gotta yeah, yeah. somebody got to pay yeah exactly <laughs> exactly yeah yeah otherwise i'm going home and... what's, what's the worst bomb you ever had Oof. um well i mean on stage it's been uh i've told this story on, on this pod i'll give you the, the brief cliff notes of it um it was years ago. It was almost like nine or ten years ago at this point at the Laugh Factory. Is uh, I was doing an act out. It was before my physicality was dialed in. Mm-hmm. Knocked drinks all over the guy <laughs> in the front row, <laughs> and I didn't know how to riff my way out of it. I wasn't. I didn't have like the stage presence. I didn't have my mm-hmm. comedic voice yet. I literally go. I'm so sorry. And then I went into my next bit, like, and I just <laughs> bombed so hard after that. Uh, you're probably like, what's this bit? And then I like, realize it's for real. Yeah. The audience smells fear and insecurity. They're like, 
immediately it all came out as soon as like it happened they knew it wasn't part of my shtick it wasn't part and i was like i'm I'm so so sorry and there's like a waitress that's like toweling the guy off and yeah that's the funny thing about stand up like polite crowds if you're like insecure and 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 um you know not confident they'll just go quiet but like if you get a hostile they'll boo you off yeah and the contrast is like somebody asked me once, do you like doing sketch more, sketch and improv more or uh, or stand up? And I was like, I don't really I really can't choose. But I know I know what I hate bombing more in. I hate bombing more in sketch than I do in stand up, because at least with stand up, I can I can maybe riff my way out of right. it. I can go back to some old bits that, that exactly. I know work and I can try and win the crowd back. But if your sketch is dying and you're on like page two of five. <laughs> there's, there's no way out of that there's no way off stage you yeah. have to get to that blackout line Oof. so you just got to keep doing it so it's, it, you know your whatever your hilarious sketch now becomes some um some real quiet intense drama that nobody understands <laughs> yeah there's some great um uh old snl sketches that either got cut for time or that did air like it killed in dress and then it went mm-hmm. you know to the show and for whatever reason, that live audience is not like you'll see the actors starting to laugh because it's bombing oh, so yeah. bad. They're like, dude, I, I don't know what to like. We have so much left in this sketch. Yeah. And you got to keep going because it's yeah. like you, you got the costumes on the light. You know, you've rehearsed. It's whatever. But I don't know. I had one sketch once where it was a, a country singer and I was singing a song and I, I try to get the crowd into it. And. You know, so I do it like three times where I try to get the crowd into it. And each time I prompted them, they did nothing. And so I just ended a sketch. I was like, I know y'all hate this shit, but fuck it. We got to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. So sing the damn <laughs> I just, I just kind of came out of pocket, came out of character. Was, and they still didn't clap. They still didn't. Wow. <laughs> they still didn't join in. Yeah. My, uh, one of my buddies, uh, I believe my buddy, Chris Edwards, uh, I used to do a lot of improv with him. He, uh, he, he put it really well. He goes, uh, he goes, you know, it's it's hard to uh, watch a stand-up bomb, uh, but that's only one person. It's much harder to watch a group of people fail together. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's way worse of a bomb to feel to be a part of that, like oh, yeah. than than be a stand-up. And especially the way the you know the the groundlings is, is like, you know, you like being cast in other people's stuff because you know, it's, yeah, there's so many different things built into that you're like oh this guy you know someone so thinks i'm funny enough to be in their sketch then it's more stage time and it's another opportunity to work on some character and um and yeah and if you're stuck in somebody's thing and it's going bad is you just yeah there's nothing you can do yeah just, you're you're just in it you just, <laughs> just in it you just hope tomorrow comes faster what was uh the trajectory as far as um like the the year amounts would you say that took for the comedy store versus the groundlings as far as like actively like hey i'm gonna try to become a pay regular at this club and hey i'm gonna try to become a main company member at the groundlings Ooh, uh it took me about it took me about well first of all i started at the groundlings um when i first came to la and i just would take some classes and i wasn't really focused on trying to like move through their program like, yeah. to be a main company i just wanted to take these classes and every time they repeated me i'd get pissed off because i'm like you know what's in the next room just tell me what's in that class right why won't you let me take it? And in between, I you know, I was booking jobs and and and, and working, so I wasn't really all that focused. You know, like I I I, I was on um, Wild and Out the first four seasons, original cast member of that, and you know, in between, still taking classes at the Groundlings, and then I left the program for a number of years, and then came back because um, I watched I watched the show, and they they was just the show was just so funny, the sketch show was so funny. I was like, man, I guess I'm not done with this. Let me go try it again. And then so once I got back in it, it probably took like another seven years almost, I think. Wow. Um, yeah, about seven, six or seven years, you know, taking class and then and then 18 months in Sunday company. And so, but a lot of that time was is waiting. It's a lot of time I was waiting for the next level. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then and then when I was in Sunday company, even in between that, that's when I got cast on Insecure on HBO. And then um yeah, and then, yeah, that's about seven years in between all that. Now, now, the comedy store is a different journey where it's like, you know, I was just doing spots all around town just trying to get up. And I was getting, you know, I was doing pretty well and in, in getting in places, but I wasn't a regular anywhere per se. Mm-hmm. I was getting really frustrated with that process. 
And so I spent a couple of years like not even trying to do mainstream clubs. I was just I was looking for all the alt rooms and all the other stuff. And yeah, just trying to get up, get those just, reps in. Just trying to get up, just get you know, because there were a lot of great alt rooms that were a lot of great alt shows, and um, I was like, well, I'll just do that route. And then I was somewhere in, I think I was doing a spot in Westwood. You ever do the Westwood Bruco? I used to love that yeah, spot. That Westwood was Bruco. That was my spot for years on uh, on Fridays, and then I'd go every once in a while on Wednesdays as well. And yeah, it was great. I would go any day that they were open. I would try and go there. And I, that's why I ran into Eleanor Kerrigan, and she brought oh, really? me. Oh, really? Yeah. At, she at Bruco? Me, uh-huh. She brought me over to the comedy store. She was like, man, I just saw your set, man. You should be over at the store. And I was like, I don't know. I've been over there. It's like a, you know, it's like a thing. It's uh, It almost feels like the Groundlings in a sense. Like, it, well, at least it used to feel like that, where, like, a lot of the paid regulars, they all knew each other. It was all very cliquish. Well, and you really couldn't break in. And there used to be because under the old talent coordinator back in the day, mm-hmm. um, it was a hang culture that you had to put in FaceTime there mm-hmm. to get to that next level. It was literally part of it, and they still do it at some clubs that I've I've heard like um, at the Punchline in San Francisco. There, mm. There's certain clubs that still do that thing where it's like that's part of your your way in is you have to learn and watch the other people that are on stage mm. and then you just have to be somebody who wants to be in the community of the club mm-hmm. so yeah yeah well the, old, the other the old talent coordinator had his own his, his own way of doing things and uh but eleanor brought me over and got me in immediately into like friends and family and i was having a great time doing that and um <laughs> I think this is where it really got off rails was when I asked them, I was like, what does it take to be a regular here? And then he just flipped it. He flipped it on me and just probably just gave me his whatever, his his go to being standoffish speech. He was like, well, why don't you try getting some laughs first? And I was like, what? What? I was like, what? Dang. I'm like, did you just see me? Yeah, I just had a good set. I was like, I just, I just ripped this shit. It's been four weeks in a row. And then. He didn't appreciate that at all. He didn't appreciate that that kind of energy. Uh, yeah, you know that that being confident, you know, and like just I was just I wasn't even trying to brag. I was just what, like I what, legit had I'm having yeah. some great sets here. Yeah, yeah. Like what what is the the actual path? Now, were you I, already when think, you were at the store? Were you currently on Wild and Out at the time, or had that not happened yet? Oh yeah, I'd already done Wild and Out. That was Wild and Out was about done by the time I started coming around to try to get past at the store. No, actually, I take that back. I was in between um, season one and two, and you I were tried to get past and, and you were on Wild and Out with Josh and Naima Funk, right? Yep, dude. So that I love the Funks. Uh, I met them at Second City. Uh, Josh Funk was artistic director mm-hmm. when I was coming up through Second City, and uh, yeah, I, I love them. They're they're great. Amazing. Naeem is a. They're both amazing improvisers. Yeah, I learned a lot. Uh, that, that was the first spot that I went to in Los Angeles was Second City. Mm-hmm. That's where I like interned and everything. And he was artistic director there. He was super supportive of, of me. And he let me intern as many hours as I wanted to and ended up paying for like all my tuition at the school. And oh, it was great. It was awesome. Oh, that's great. Lovely people. Lovely people. Yeah. So I, wa- I want to say it might have. I want to say it might have been about the same amount of time to be to become a, a paid regular at the comedy store because. I would just have potluck. I would just have Monday night drop in potluck spots, family, you know, friends and family spots, and then, and then, and then at some point, I got, I got the, I got the, I got the word I could, I could try and get a fallout spot during the week, um, and I would come by after trying to do other spots and just wait again, wait all wait, night, wait, 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 and I would wait. Was I this would, under Tommy? When you were yeah, waiting, it was under Tommy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would wait, and um, and I would get up, and I would, I mean, I. I mean, I can't tell you how many years I spent at the, in the OR doing shows in front of like four people. Mm-hmm. Maybe four years, <laughs> like Dang. you know, six, eight, four. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You know that last like, like right after when Don, when, you know, but when Don Bears comes on and like you know the people have cleared out and then and then he brings in a couple people from I don't know where who come to see him and and then you'd watch him do like 20 minutes. He's got a cult following, man. Yeah. He brings he brings out like, you know. He brings out some very specific people. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh he'd do 20 minutes and then be like, "Okay, who's up next?" And I'd be like, it's, I'm like I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, it's 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 one o'clock. like, uh-huh. Are we still doing this? We're still doing this. Yep, let's oh, go. Okay, let's go. Let's yeah. do it. For years. Uh so I, when did I become a regular there? Maybe 2013 or so. So, yeah, it, it takes a long time. It can take it can take a long time. I should say that. 
some other folks have gone through a lot faster. But I mean, that don't pay attention. I would say don't pay attention to the to the rare few cases of somebody's like no, they'll drive you crazy. You know, the rocket ship success kind of thing. You know, like when you know we all have had those friends who get kind of plucked early out of mm-hmm. the scene, and it's like yo. That was an anomaly. I know, don't yeah. don't be like, how come they're getting this and this is like that's one out of the hundreds of us that are. You 100%. know what I mean? The exception to the rule is not the rule. Right. Like you know, there's only so many Tom Cruises in the world. Only yep. so many people who can be a movie star at 18, and then continue until what is he 60 now? Like he's <laughs> one of the last real movie stars. Like, Tom Cruise, Will Smith. We'll see what's going on with him. Like uh, like if he. Can, I think he'll, I think he'll figure it out. Like, but he's he's still like mm-hmm. considered like a box office guy. I'll, I'll actually be really curious his next movie, how this last thing affected how will affect like box office numbers and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. I Who mean, knows? I'm sure he's doing fine sitting on whatever 107. Uh, he's doing fine. <laughs> he'll figure. It he'll out. figure it out for sure. He'll for sure. Yeah. Uh, well. I wanted, I obviously, I wanted the, the listeners and viewers to get to know you a little bit. Um, but since Leonard is a seasoned uh, vet of sketch and improv and stand up, I would love to do an extended wig segment with you okay. uh, where we wigs. do uh, a few of our characters, a few of our original characters. Um, you hit me up before the show and, uh, and, and sent me a little bit of info. And uh, I, I got some characters that I think will be fun to, to match. Uh, or contrast <laughs> with your characters. Let's so. roll with it. Let's do it. Wait. All right. Uh, my name's Coach Roy Robeson. Hey, Coach. Hey, man. What's going on? Jackson, good to see you uh, not on school premises. I, uh, <laughs> I know that you... Keep it down over there, kids, okay? Uh, I know that you uh, recently got let go at Johnson County Community College. Yeah, yeah. Can we, uh, can we uh, maybe uh, discuss uh, the reason for leaving? Uh, you kind of left in a kerfuffle out of nowhere. I was a little bit surprised uh, to see you gone because I miss you, buddy. I miss seeing you in the break room. Oh, I appreciate that. You know, it's not oftentimes you get to work on a, uh, in a, on a school situation in a school premises where you where, where you on a part-time contract, which, you know, you're working full-time, and, and then you actually make friendships that will sustain past the 3 o'clock um, ending period of the school. I do not have many any close personal friends so mr fox it is uh you know uh one could say that i am uh your hound to your fox <laughs> oh okay hey that's all right yeah hey maybe after this we go uh you know maybe go to 7-eleven get a couple slushies and maybe go see nope i mean i've heard uh really good things from uh you know uh different communities of people uh okay from community colleges yep. uh the white community the okay. black community yeah a lot of different communities are really into that movie yeah so yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing nope okay yeah i like to i like to stay up with the times yeah yeah definitely uh, i would love to do that and um back to uh why you got fired uh oh, i'm yeah. still a little bit curious about that uh, a lot of uh, the staff and i you know uh are really <laughs> listen you better shut up over there, all right? You just need to pipe down a little bit. I know Man, that you those... got some good ears. I don't hear a goddamn thing. You know, I know that at this Chipotle that we're in right now, yep. uh, that, 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 that those kids are not even at the school. Uh, they're not students, but uh, whenever they start misbehaving in front of their parents, I can't. The beast inside of me has to let loose, and I get a little upset. Hey, man, that's all right. You got to follow your passion. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, so back to you getting fired. Oh, uh, okay, we're going to bring that up again. Yeah, I was uh, uh, quite curious uh, what transpired, to be honest, because hey, look, uh, there was a fire alarm that yep. was present whenever you were let go. There was. Yeah, I pressed the alarm. Okay, I'm, you know, I never made no qualms about that. I was straight up right off, right off the front, off the top on that one. Like, I pulled that alarm, but that was for good reason, okay? Now, I don't know if you remember in the break room, there was a um, there was a toaster oven in there. Yeah, like of course. When I, when I started, there wasn't a toaster oven. Then when I came on in, there was a toaster oven. Cause I brought that toaster oven in. That was you. Yeah. I've been popping tarts for many a year thanks to you. I appreciate that. Well, let me tell you. So 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 what you can do with a toaster 
um, is not what you can do with a toaster oven. Okay, uh -huh. so a toaster, a toaster, you just you just toast things. A toaster oven, you you, you make whole whole meals. Okay, like so, a Thanksgiving dinner if you really wanted to. Hey, if you got the time, that toaster oven will do you right. Okay, it'll do you right, and it was a good size right there. And um, it was it a convectional or a, like a sauna? Like what was it? No, it wasn't a sauna. You you need much bigger apparatus for it to be a sauna. Okay, but, all but right. It did have the convention oven uh, capabilities. Uh huh. Okay, so it wasn't just free heating food. I mean, we 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 gonna make a whole meal in there now. Yeah. Okay, so what what a lot of people don't realize is when you are on a permanent substitute teacher contract, you are not actually getting the same rates as a full time employee. Okay. So, so like in sports, you know, I'm a big sports guy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I coach here at, at the college. Um. Is that kind of like you're a free agent now? Is that kind of what you are like, yes. kind of like trying to explain to me? Yes, I, I'm back in the LASD school system. You know, I will find another job. But the, but the original question why I got fired, it was a slight misunderstanding about the amount of usage of said toaster oven and whether or not I had exceeded that. Okay, because like I said, you can cook whole ass meals in there. And that's basically what I was doing. And what they want you to do in them break rooms is just grab a snack real quick, maybe a little chit chat, and then get back to your classroom. And I was like, well, hey, look, man, I'm on a subcontract. I ain't got another class for another two hours. So, you know, I might as well do some meal prep for the week. And that's what I was doing. And that's it. Long story short, I overloaded the circus and, um, and, set, the, and set the break room on fire. So, yeah, let me go. Did you ever, like, uh, you're like, I'm on a subcontract, and then you're actually making, like, a sub in the oven? You know what I mean? Like a, oh, like a, like a, like a Jimmy John's kind oh, of situation or something? Doing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what's the other stuff? There's a, there's a. Um, well, the, Jimmy John's Freaky Fast. Quiznos. That's what I was thinking. Oh, Quiznos. Quiznos. Yeah, that's Quiznos. the other hot one. Subway. Little known fact: you can get them toasted there. You can, but it's not a popular selection. But oh, yeah. they do offer it at certain hours of the day. Oh yeah, you gotta ask. Yeah, it's definitely not one of those things where they're gonna volunteer it for you because mm -hmm. they're kind of lazy pieces of crap at Subway. Oh, yeah. Had a lot of issues with kids who quit community college mm -hmm. and then went full time at Subway. So I have a, a, a dark place in my heart for the, those people. Hey, and a little a little side note tip: if they're toasting bread, they will also toast your meat. What do you mean by that toasting meat? Like if you want your bread toasted, you can also have them toast your meat. Like individually or within the the sandwich. What I do is I say, please toast the bread, please. Then they take the bread out after it's been toasted, and I say, oh, you know what? I forgot. Could you put some cheese on it and toast that? Then they'll toast that. You get then, a double toast. Then it comes back out, and I say, you know what? I don't know where my mind is today, but I would love if you were to toast some of that turkey and a little bit of that pepper jack again, and maybe a little bit of that roast beef. Let me tell you something. There's kind Let me of a... tell you something, Coach. Okay, If, if go you ahead. had a cold Subway, ain't nothing like a full-on toasted Subway. I, I mean... I toast every round. It sounds like it competes with Quiznos, which is very near and dear to my heart. Oh, it's going to set, it's gonna set uh, Quiznos back a couple notches. The only thing y'all uh, you would not want to wanna toast is the lettuce, and that's for obvious reasons. Okay, well, the next time that you go to Chipotle, I've got a little life hack for you. Okay, okay? hack it on. Okay, uh, ever heard of a quesarito there? Have, have you ever ordered one of those? Have not, but I like where you're going with this. Okay, you ask them to make a quesarito first, okay? Quesarito. Quesarito instead of a burrito. So basically, what you do is you get the tortilla and you toast it with cheese on it. Yep. Then they fold it over. Okay. Then the cheese is melty okay. rather than going on raw and cold oh. out of nowhere. Oh. That way you're getting warm melted cheese to the top of your dome. Oh. It's not scolding it like pizza or anything okay. like that. It's perfect temperature yes. and it makes everything else congeal together Do that. if you want the lettuce on the other side of it that's on you I that's totally that at all. okay then take the lettuce off entirely uh -huh. get it without the cilantro i always ask for no cilantro in my white rice that's and then you wrap it up with the steak you get the hot yep. salsa and you get the black beans makes and then sense. you're in heaven with some either some steak or barbacoa my friend hey you know what you don't you don't hack my world right there i never really thought about that it's an obvious connection it really is Nobody likes cold cheese. I mean, it's true. Like, uh, like, do you ever eat just cold cheese sandwiches? No, you eat Never. grilled cheese sandwiches. Never. Yeah. Matter of fact, when I go to places and they add like a little party or something, like sometimes a wedding, some reception, or maybe like a, a baby shower, mm -hmm. and they got what, what's the, uh, the little thing with the meat and the cheese on the plate? Uh, and Fondue? Just, no, not the fondue. It's just sitting out there in the sun. And accoutrement? Just out there. there you go. Your little accoutrement plate. Yeah. Uh, charcuterie coochimon plate. Yeah, coochimon. Yeah, get a little coochimon plate. I'm mm -hmm. like, mm -mm, you better put that. You better put that in a microwave or a hot 
hot oven or a grill or something. If it's a female waitress, I say, hey, can I get a little bit of your coochie, Mon? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know I am married, but I do like to uh, throw out Hail hey, Marys every once in a while. Hey, you ain't dead. Well, that's the saying. <laughs> if you have a pulse, then, <laughs> you know, let it throb. Yeah, let that, let that pulse throb. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to seeing Nope with you for sure. Hey, yeah. And uh, I wish, you know, uh, we, you would have come by the gym a little bit when you were teaching at, at the school. Um, but what was the last subject that you were teaching uh, before you were let go? I was teaching body mechanics, which is a which is a variation on um, on biology and sex education. Uh huh. It's it's a new part of the new curriculum. Okay, so you're fusing a couple things. Yes. Uh, what could you tell me about my body, perhaps? Uh, well, you're a long man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're a very lean, long man. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah Deborah, you, you hear that? Getting oh. compliments from the fox not jamie mm -hmm. the other one and 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 i would say that you take long strides long strides long strokes yeah long strides and long strokes and um and i would probably i'll probably venture to say by the uh by the by the weight of your eyelids that i'm soaking in you're probably a little dehydrated i mean i i, I might be so it might be a good call. That's just an observation. That's not a medical fact or statement. You know, I would not, I would not call your insurance and ask for a, a discount or anything based on any information that I'm saying. You know, uh, you didn't know this about me, but uh, it's a little bit of a triggering subject that you just oh. brought up. Oh my. Okay. Uh, I used to be a track athlete. Oh. Um, had the chance to go to the Olympics, and uh, okay, I, I cramped. Oh um, yeah before uh, I reached the finish line mm. doing hurdles uh, in the 100 meter Hey, don't feel bad. That's a, common, that's a common occurrence. I know, but, uh, you know, uh, a male specimen of my size and yep. stature, it, should, it shouldn't have happened. Very it was long a, lean. It was a thank you, long and lean, hashtag long and lean. It was one of those things that haunts my nightmares. Uh, every night when I go to sleep, my wife has to wake me from my sleep paralysis because I just start screaming lift your leg bozo mm. um and because i did i didn't i didn't reach mm -hmm. uh then you know my knee slapped and then it knocked and then it i i yeah you tumble i, I tumble that's a common that's hey look yeah. i've watched a lot of hurling um matches and yeah. and, and races and and that's a, that you know there's one in every bunch you know that this happened to be you but they don't have to be your life story now 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 what now uh part you know another part uh what i did uh, on a substitute basis was a little bit of counseling for the kids and what i would say is i would say transfer that loss into a win in some other column so just find another hobby or something else that you're good at you know and and, and just imagine just imagine it's the same event but you're doing the different events so imagine you're back at that 100 meter hurdles and maybe saying you're playing dodgeball with these third graders and just take it out on them they ain't gonna know the difference. You know, I love that. You know, uh, a saying in the Robeson household is, what did two L's make? A W. Oh, okay. I didn't even see where you was going yeah, with that. Yeah. Okay. I was yeah. gonna say LL, like LL Cool J. You know, that's what I, that's what I was gonna go with. I mean, he L's is, oh, uh, you know, the coolest of the J's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but I definitely, you know, I do not listen to his music much. I do like his hydration of his lips, uh, how much he. Yeah replenishes uh with his tongue to See? to tip of the lip ratio that See? is something that i respect i'm more of a chapstick guy myself so you're aware of the de dehydration issues and opportunities so, See, you know once i right fell with my dehydration i started seeing it in other rappers and other performers uh -huh. and stuff like that so it's something that i you know I look back on and I regret deeply in life, and now I see how others can improve, and that's why I'm a community college coach. Hey, you know what I always say? Why regret when you can reminisce? Okay? So then you can just turn that into a positive right there. I like you a lot, Fox. I hey, like you man, a lot. We hit it off from day one, and we're going to keep hitting it off till day, till day zero. All right, I'll see you in the Nope Theater premiere. All right. Yeah, hey, if anybody wants to come, just slide in the DM and ask us. You know, we'll reserve a couple of seats. I'm not buying no tickets now, but I will put my jacket down on a seat and pretend like you're already there. Sounds good, Fred. All right. You ever had a pokey? I've been in the pokey. <laughs> oh, you've been in the pokey? Oh, no, that's a whole different kind of thing, bro. Yo, I don't know. You What, what are you saying? You can eat? 
You can eat pokey? Oh yeah, pokey is it's like uh it's like Japanese or Hawaiian or some shit, man. It's like a rice bowl and then you can like put like little accoutrements on it. Like you put like little like scallions or like some um or like some onions or like uh or like some um radishes. I mean those are all those are all kinds of onions, I think, but or you can also get different different kinds of meat, bro. You can get like salmon or like tuna. It's like all in a rice bowl, bro. And like put a little sushi on it, man. It, 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 that stuff is dope, bro. Is that what they uh, be talking about in that song where they're like, that's what it's all about, that pokey? Oh, that's the hokey pokey, bro. That's a whole different pokey. Oh, okay. Well, so far I've named two different ass pokies, and they the wrong one. I guess the third one's a charm, right? Hey, man. Hey, it's okay. Not everybody's up on it, man. Like, I went a trip to Hawaii one time, and, and that's everybody was eating this, this stuff on the beach. And I was okay. like, hey, man, where the food at, bro? And they're like, oh, it's a poke bowl. And I was like, a what? I was like, a poke bowl. And I did the same thing you did, bro. I did the same thing you did. I was like, like, like what, I got to go to jail? They were like, no, man, yeah. that's a different pokey. And I was like, what? I got to put my right hand in and take my right hand out? They're like, no, man, that's a hokey pokey. And I was like, well, what is it, man? And somebody just gave it to me, and I, I fell in love, bro. I fell in love. <laughs> that's uh, when I came back to this. That's when I came back to Cali. I was like, I gotta give me a job at a pokey spot. I mean, I, got, I so I saw pokey on the sign outside before uh-huh. I, I went and like I just got out of pokey. But I like I thought it was like one of them like ironic like S and M places or something like that uh-huh. where like people whip you like with with handcuffs like get inside the pokey uh-huh. like and get his ass. You know what I'm saying? So I came in here thinking that I was going to get a different experience, but then you telling me that you serving rice and food and stuff here. Oh, yeah, bro. It's good. It's good. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to use my employee discount and get you some, bro, because I'm going to tell you, once you, get on some, once you get on this here, Pokey, bro, it's going to change your life, man. <laughs> Yo, J- Jermaine? Yeah, Jermaine. Man, you hooking it up, dog. I'm gonna I appreciate you, up, you bro. dog. It's Jermaine. Hey, look, hey, anybody watching right now, um, uh, I work at the Poke Spot on Melrose, 7307 Melrose Avenue. Uh, Ask for Jermaine. That's J-E-R, State of Maine. Okay, come on down. I'm going to hook you up, all right? Everybody get about 10% off. But for you, bro, I'm just going to straight up buy you a straight up Poke Bowl, bro. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, Shanks is in the building getting that free Poke straight out the Poke. Hey, get that free Poke, bro. Get it when you can, man. You know what I'm saying? Because you ain't going to come around all the time. That's what I say. You know, life's about opportunities and options and um variable discounts that you want to cash in from time to time uh my, my homie got variable palsy in in, in the slammer dog so Ooh. you know thinking of you that gotta be tough yeah mm-hmm. would you say pokey because i ain't never heard of this stuff you know would you say it's like a white people sport an asian sport a black sport, a Latino sport, like what are we working with here? Because like I never heard of it in my life. Oh, okay. Again, we got another confusion. Uh, the poke bowl, it's a food. It's a food. We're gonna eat that, John man. Oh no no no. I I know that. Oh, I'm just saying it's like you know the sport of eating. You know. Oh, I see. Like if it was a competitive eating situation, oh yeah. that'd be definitely a white guy thing. But okay. Although there is a Japanese dude who'd be murdering that joint, man. Like that, like the 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 Kobayagi guy. Yeah, man, he'd be yeah. eating these hot dogs, which is wild, bro. Because that, that ain't even like a Japanese food, bro. Like he had to be like introduced to a fucking hot dog first before he decided like I'm to do this for a living yo i gotta say like you know the hot dog eating contest is cool and stuff like that but it's a little gay right like they look oh. like <laughs> like they be so they be, <laughs> they be so they be sucking they be sucking down them glizzies <laughs> you know what i'm saying just like going like like back and forth back and forth back and forth hey. like yo for where i come from hot dog eating contest little gay hey man here's the thing though the difference is they're just straight shoving them in. There ain't no back and forth. That sucker just goes in. So, you know, I guess. Like, so, wait. With you, with this frame of thinking, you saying if you bite a dick off and swallow it, it's not gay. But if you slurp it back up and then back down your throat, then that's gay as hell. I guess what I'm saying is like, you know, the analogy between the hot dog eating contest and homosexual activity is probably more similar to a uh, homosexual ghost entering your mouth and passing through your skull than it is you believe in ghosts well I, I don't not believe in them hell yeah that was deep i mean i ain't i ain't seen a ghost but i also haven't not seen a ghost you know what i'm saying yo <laughs> that same with my dad like i know he exists i don't ever seen him but like he might have come into my life and he still might 
Oh, but you know what I'm saying? That's yeah, how I look at my dad. Yeah, that's real deep, bro. That's, that's real, real deep. Like yeah. you don't know your dad exists, yeah. but you know he did exist because you here right now. Facts. Damn, Facts. bro. Yeah. Damn. Why yeah. you think about at, it like that? I look at my dad like paranormal activity, son. Is it there? Is it not? I don't know. Somebody's seen it at some point. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, but this pokey be looking fine as hell, dog. Yeah, bro, you can put anything in it. Yo, you there's know, some bitties that be coming through here, be getting pokey too. It seems like Ooh. like a, a high for you know some bitties on big Oh yeah, ass. that bitties be here, bro. Yeah. There be so many babes coming in, man. Instagram chicks, TikTok chicks, you know, just chicks trying to get in the game, chicks getting out the game. Yeah. You know, girls coming from Pilates, girls coming from yoga, girls coming from you know hikes on Rungan Canyon, Ooh. girls who just coming from coffee, mm. you know, girls who come from auditions, Ooh. girls who model, <laughs> girls who want model girls who are just on a walk girls who are just trying to meet other girls just some girls who are just like applying for jobs sometimes yo do more women like pokey than men because that was a lot of list oh yeah there's a lot of girls man they be into that eating healthy that's the other thing man you want me to hey i don't know how long you've been out the out, out the pen i'll just but, say recently <laughs> uh you know I, i'm guessing based on on, on the uh, outfit you have chosen for the day yeah that it is recently but yeah uh, what i tell folks like hey you want to meet some like you know fine ladies bro you got to go to some health food spots bro okay you know what i'm saying like like yoga places or juice places or anything that has kombucha you gonna find some fine girls, bro. Oh, like that uh, that Air Padawan store. Oh man, Air Wan. Oh, that's what it is. Air Wan. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I be seeing like some highfalutin chicks be coming out of there, and I be like, Yo, what is it gonna take for me to get your number? And like a lot of them like just keep walking, or they call the cops on me because I look a certain way. That makes sense. Maybe it's a jumpsuit. Maybe I need to get some new threads. But they be rude as hell to me at that store. Hey, you know what? I think I think part of it is is they are um, in shock on how much them groceries cost, and that'll put anybody in a bad mood. Right. You know what I'm saying? People right. at Ralph's be happy. People at Air One, they be coming out mad, bro. Yo, yeah, like Trader Joe's, people be starting to get pissy because like yep. it's kind of saving, but at the same time, it's not at all. It ain't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's that fine line right there between like having good food at a reasonable price. You know what I'm saying? You. you like, you're going to find some dimes at Air One. You're going to find some good eights at Trader Joe's. Yo, you're going to get some fours at Aldi. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn right. Yeah, what well, I was thinking, maybe, like, you're not going to maybe hang out after this dog. Like, maybe, maybe, like, once you get done with your shift, you can maybe put in a word for me to work here as well. What you say? Hey, bro. Hey, hey. I'm, I'm an equal opportunity referrer. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you the manager here or what? No, uh 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 Okay, well. But I'm an equal opportunity refer. I will refer anybody equally who wants an opportunity. Okay, you're going hard with that R on that refer, but I, okay, uh -huh. that's fine, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like that. <laughs> and with a man like, with a name like Shanks, I'm assuming you're good with a knife. And you know what? Half of this job is just chopping up vegetables and meat into small pieces, bro. Oh, well, I was made for slamming pokey then. That's all it is. You know what I'm saying? Just chopping Yo, up things in a real small piece. Is this pokey the same as the mon that the cartoon was based off of that you got to catch them all? You know what? That's a real good question. I ain't really think about it. You know, some of the meat might be, might, I mean, maybe. Like, is some of the meat like imitation Pikachu or something like that? You know maybe what I'm saying? Maybe some Squirtle. Maybe some Squirtle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you, do you find like with the, the paper straws, they don't suck as well as the plastic straws? I'm sorry, man. I zoned out for a quick second, right, man? My my brain just went off, bro. Damn. Ha <laughs> ha. That gummy kicked in strong right then and there. Did you catch that on film, bro? <laughs> Y'all see that? Yo, you guys. He was talking to me, and I was like, Urk. You got some gummies? No, I had some, but I'm off now. <laughs> uh, okay. You know, I was just doing a. I was talking to myself about Pokemon, I guess, but man, oh, no. I feel oh, like I'm back I'm locked up, looking at a wall, talking to the wall about Pokemon, on, nobody st listening, stay with me, me Shanks. looking right here, stay with and me, I'm Shanks. getting angry. Come on, Shanks. Start, stay with me, bro. Stay with and me. And then my oh, grill no, not your fucking grill. pops out no. because I just went to Chipotle. That's the first place that I went. Stay I had to me, go Shanks. get a Chipotle burrito. I got to put that motherfucker in my mouth and then it'll bite down on it because it's the only thing I can afford right now. But no, it's nice to be with you here at this dumbass pokey place, hey. bitch. Hey, Shanks, I got to say, when your grill popped out, I was not expecting the pearly whites that I done seen under there, bro. 
you might just might you you just might want to roll without that grill from now on, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You mouth mean, a mouth like that, we put you at the front of the pokey shop, bro. You, you know, gonna meet all the biddies as they come in, bro. Yo, you making a homie smile and blush I'm over saying, here, bro. Dog. You got teeth like that, bro. You should be in the front of the store, bro. That's, <laughs> what, that's what they told me when I was locked up with teeth like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You yeah. know, I got I got a full grill top and bottom. I, I, I take these things off and look like Tootsie Rolls, bro. My mouth is jacked up. Okay, well, I appreciate it. I can, uh, you know, refer you to my oral dentist. Okay. <laughs> it's me. Oh, shit. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, dog? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't yeah, know what dog. you're saying, bro. Yeah, we going all the way, dog. I'm gonna pokey your mom. You know what I'm saying? Are we still talking about dental care? Nah, dog. Buttholes. Oh. Okay. First, you give me a job here. Then we going on a date. Then we find the biddies. We have an agenda to get through. If I could just maybe pause for one second there, uh -huh. just put a pause on it. Yeah. We put it on the shelf. Uh huh. Put a little cabinet. Okay. And then lock I hit that up. I hit play. I got the keys. Lock I that unlock up. it. And then like, that's oh, not, we writing in a diary together. No, then that's, that's not cool talking about hell. that ever. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yup. Well, you got my number for this job that you're going to give me, so I'll see you soon. Yeah. Come on by, bro. I'll refer you. It will get you a job. And then hopefully we will just leave that relationship professional all right, right there. i love you uh -huh. man make sure you take down that cell phone number and text right away all and right thanks you might be if i'm in the vicinity you might be receiving some dirty airdrops i will turn that wi-fi off then bro <laughs> huh. respectfully though exactly respectfully. turn your wifey off when you are around me dog yeah <laughs> i see you dog <laughs> i love you bye all right peace Hello, fellow friends, LARPers, and esteemed colleagues. You're watching Dungeons and Douglas, the only podcast dedicated to the three people that are in my Discord. <laughs> Today on the program, we have a conspiracy theorist, and he is coming to us live from San Antonio. He flew all the way in, and he is here with us right now. He will not reveal his name, but we did connect through the World Wide Web and a disclosed email that I will not say at this moment. Thank you for having me. And um, for those of you tracking how I got here or how I will be leaving, I may or may not have flown in or maybe I drove in or maybe I actually live here and just told you I flew in. My whereabouts are unknown for a good reason. And I'd like to keep them that way. Thank you very much. Wow. So this is going to be a fun person to interview for my podcast. Hopefully by the end of the podcast, he will open up just a little bit and let Douglas inside his heart. So I will gain not one, but yet another friend outside of my pal, Draconio, which resides on my head as always. Would you ever say that dragons still exist, sir? I would say the dragons do exist, and I would say probably a majority of the surviving dragons are being held under captivity somewhere deep in a facility outside of Area 51. So Roswell, New Mexico? Heard of it, people? Comment below, like, and hit that subscribe button on my Discord. A lot of people like to say Roswell Area 51 is where America keeps most of its secrets, but what people don't know is that it's actually a decoy facility. Really? The real facility is outside of a, of a, an Air Force base in Guam. So, did you ever play the game Tony Hawk's Pro Skater? Of course. Did you ever play on the Roswell level? Of course. Now, would you say that that level is just a bunch of hubbub and the real place should have been the Guam area that you just asked for mentioned? That's exactly what I'm saying. I will also say that a little less known video game is Tony Avila's Pro Skater. Never really got off the ground. You want to know about some real skating? Try that. Lord to Dogtown. Let's go. Wow. I love that you have facts about Southern California like this. That's amazing. I took you for more of a Stacey Peralta guy myself. Yes. Very interesting. Now, as a conspiracy theorist, I think it is your job to question the unknown and also put pressure on other people whether to 
think outside of the norms of convention. Is that correct? Is that fair for me to say? Yeah, that's fair for you to say, but I'd also like to say that I don't consider myself a conspiracy theorist as much as I am a truth sayer and truth revealer. Sorry, I did not mean to put down your belief system. As a derogatory term, conspiracy theorist, it suggests that I don't know what the hell's going on, or in fact, I actually do know what's going on. I'm very in tune to what's actually happening these days, and you need to open your eyes, brother, if you want to see the real, real. Okay, well, then let's get to the top question on my Discord right now. Have you seen an alien, and has it been inside of you? Okay, so if you wanna if you wanna know about the real real, here's the facts. Aliens have been here for over three hundred centuries. Okay? They have been walking around on the planet and they look just as real as you and I. They will not reveal themselves unless unless you are engaged in sexual activity. At the point of climax for either the male or female species, they will give off a slight glow. Now, would you lump these people into, I've heard of something called the reptilians? No. Do you believe in reptile people? No. Really? Oh, looks like I found a conspiracy theory that my friend over here does not believe in. Again, there's truth and then there's the real real. Now, the truth of the matter is the story of the reptile people, though, was originated by the alien species, which have been walking this earth for over 300 centuries to throw the throw the scent and the truth off of them. So you create you create a monster that cannot be found to hide the monster that is walking in plain sight. Do you believe in the Zeta Reticuli alien district? Yes, I do. And I've been there. You've been there? Yes, I have. What was it like? Um, well, if you've ever been to a shopping mall in Cincinnati, it's very similar. Really? Yes. Kind of exciting at first, but then underwhelming? Yes, and, and a lot of things are ridiculously overpriced and outdated. Wait, you purchased goods and then brought them back to planet Earth? Uh, no, no, I was actually a good for sale. Um, in that particular situation, I, I, I had been kidnapped and or abducted. You were human trafficked by aliens? Yes, I was. <gasps> wow. Fascinating. Continue. Uh, I spent about five Earth years being a sex trafficked alien by, by uh, a pack of aliens. And what kind of stuff did they make you do? Mostly hand stuff. Hmm. Like over the over the pants stuff? No, mostly stuff with my hands. Like, for, for like, could you explain that to like for like my for, hands on things for people who've had sex like me, like a lot of sex? Like, could you like maybe like go like a little bit more like descriptive? Because we all know like what hand stuff is, but like what is uh you know uh not a conspiracy theorist, but a truth sayer's uh, hand stuff versus like a guy who crushes it hand stuff. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Um, so here's the thing. The alien species that we speak of, the ones that had abducted me, they look very much like you and I, except again, right at the point of climax, they will present a slight glow around their genital regions. Uh, the only difference is they don't prefer internal intercourse. Most of their intercourse is external. Okay, so a lot of the hand stuff involved me getting them aroused and then moving the ejaculate over to another subspecies to which uh, I would implant them with the semen of the other species. Um, it's, it's all done through touch and deep massage. So you're saying that you would jack off an alien, put it in your hand like a cereal bowl, and then put it in the canal of another alien? Look, that that is a if that's a simple way for you to understand that, then yeah, then that's what I did. But it's it's actually a little bit more involved in that. But it's really not something that humans can really comprehend or understand. There's a whole ritual involved in the process. The way you described it, it sounds dirty, like some cheap whore in an alley. But I was actually a revered and valued member of their society for over five years. The best part of waking up is alien come in your butt. Um, you, you actually would rub the ejaculate into the female chest regions and it would be, be absorbed in their uh, in the, the gills that are slightly underneath would, would be the human are, areolas. 
Oh, so like if an alien says, come on my tits, they're trying to get pregnant. Yes. <gasps> now that is fascinating for a guy like me who's done that many times with women, but never done that with an alien. Now, you, before you went to the the Zeta Reticuli district, um, did you have a family here or anything like that? Do you have family or, or kids or, or friends here? I'd rather not say. Okay. But if they are listening, know that I am alive and I am well. Okay, well, um, we're always looking for new Discord members. And if you ever want to go LARPing with us, then the invitation is wide open, my friend. So I will say thank you for coming on Dungeons and Douglas today. And that is our time. Do you have anything else that you'd like to say? Yeah, let me see your chest. Like, like now? Let me see your chest. I want to make sure you don't have any gills underneath your areolas. That's the only way to prove you're not an alien. Draconia, or is this okay? Then? Okay. Yeah. Show them. Okay, rub them. Rub both of them. With both your hands. Yeah. Keep rubbing them. There we go. There we go. I'll hum a little bit. Yeah, but like, but like, move your lips. There we go. There we go. There we go. Keep it going. Like and subscribe. Yeah. There we go. Real good. All right, gotta gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, those guys kind of uh, took over the uh, the show a little bit, but um, yeah, how was that? Was that weird? I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told totally my wheelhouse. When people are down to get weird like that, I'm like, I have so much fun doing that. So, dude, thanks for coming by. Uh, is there anything that you wanted to uh, plug before we uh, we step out? Hey, well, thanks for having me again. Uh, you you know, if you're looking for me on social, I'm only on Instagram. I am Leonard Robinson. And other than that, just look for me weekly at the Groundlings. You can check out, check them out at the thegroundlings.com. Um, check their schedule on a weekly, see where I'm at. Or uh, usually when I'm in LA, I'm, I'm at the comedy store a lot. So also check their sites, or, or better yet, just call the club and ask when I'm performing, and then um, and then they'll add some more dates. Awesome, yeah. And uh, I went to uh, Leonard, one of Leonard's Groundling shows, um, and it was. So freaking good! I actually want to hit you up to to come back. Uh, I appreciate to that another Anytime. one because it was uh, just for just being a peer of yours and a friend of yours. It's cool to see people thrive and do their thing. And it was uh, it's one of those shows like you leave where you you leave inspired where you're like, oh man, this is cool. Like like because as a stand up, we're not around live sketch as yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. I used to be around improv all the time and uh, I really miss it sometimes. So like when I went and saw your show, it brought back like a lot of good memories and uh, yeah, you're killing it in the show. So yeah, I highly recommend you seeing Leonard live doing sketch, improv, stand up, all the above guys. I appreciate it. Or, and uh, if you got HBO max, catch me out on insecure. Just, uh, I mean, the show's over, but the episodes are still up. So check it out. Do it. <laughs> <laughs>